welcome those of you who don't know me. My name's the Reverend Tim Horlock. I'm the vicar of St Andrews in Chorleywood and here we are uh, outside, uh, outside the church on this Palm Sunday. Let's open with a prayer. King and Lord Jesus, open our eyes to see your majesty and glory and help us to declare you as Lord of heaven and earth with all of our lives. Amen. This Palm Sunday uh, we are in the midst of the storm of the coronavirus uh, and our hearts and our prayers are very much with those people who are suffering at this time and a special thanks to all the amazing NHS workers especially those from our church family who are working so hard. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you at this time. Well, what words of hope can we speak into our lives this Palm Sunday? Well, Palm Sunday reminds us that Jesus is King. He is King of all of creation. He is King of our lives and he's King over this coronavirus. And he calls us to trust in him at this time. Today in our passage in Luke chapter 19 verses 28 to 48 paints a beautiful picture of the character of our King, the character of Jesus Christ. I'm reminded uh, of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's comments in his book which he wrote shortly coming out of a uh, Nazi jail uh, after World War II. He said... What really troubled him was who Christ really is today. He went on, we need to be very aware of the danger of modernising Jesus, shaping him into the person who we would like him to be, rather than the person who he really is. There's a real danger in the world today, he said, to present a more comfortable Jesus that appeals to our preferences and our thoughts about what good God should be in our sight rather than who God really is portrayed in scripture. Well we're going to answer some of that question today this Palm Sunday as we look at the character of God. We're reminded that Jesus said these words, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So it's worth noting from Scripture that the first Palm Sunday is recorded in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And it's worth noting that very few passages are recorded in all four. So as we look at St Luke's account of Palm Sunday, I want to bring up three points which point to the three areas of God's character I'd like to focus on this Palm Sunday. First of all, humility. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Second of all, compassion. Jesus wept over Jerusalem, we read. And thirdly, purity and holiness. Jesus cleansed the temple in this passage. And Jesus was in a different mood for each of these events in this story revealing something of his character to you and to me as we answer that question, who is God? What is he really like? So first of all, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. There is a huge significance in this act of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. This story tells us that Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead of him to collect a donkey, a young donkey, a colt, um, with that, uh, those words to the owner, the Lord needs it. Clearly the owner had a, a, a dream or an encounter uh, with God that uh, preempted this, uh, uh, this, uh, this question, uh, you know, who needs it? The Lord needs it. And so Jesus rode on this donkey as he set his face to Jerusalem, riding down the hill, the Mount of Olives, into Jerusalem. He would have been fulfilling a prophecy 
a prophecy which we read of in Zechariah chapter 9 in the Old Testament, written hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It's worth noting that the donkey is a symbol of peace, where the horse was a symbol of war. After a victorious battle, generals and kings would often ride into their cities on war horses, parading in victory with crowds shouting and waving branches. And here we see in this messianic psalm of Psalm 118, those words, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So the crowd who welcomed Jesus into the city of Jerusalem, waving palm branches, were prophetically saying that Jesus is riding into his city in victory. The victory that was to come with his death on the cross. Being victorious over sin and death, defeating evil and sin for each and every one of us. Jesus is indeed a king. And the Palm Sunday reminds us of these palm crosses which we receive uh, every year, a symbol of victory that Jesus rode into Jerusalem victorious, pointing to what is to come. It's worth noting too that people didn't see Jesus as he saw himself. The kind of king that the people were expecting were a, a king of war, a king that was going to defeat the Gentile Roman rule over them and lead a victorious rebellion against them. Instead, Jesus rode into Jerusalem as King of Kings and Lord of Lords on a donkey, bringing in his reign as the Prince of Peace. Jesus is indeed a King, riding into victory. But it was not the kind of victory that people were expecting. Jesus came to defeat the powers of sin and death on the cross. You see, Jesus' timing was perfect. It was Passover time. And all Jewish people knew that Passover is freedom. Everyone was reminded of that amazing story where Jesus, where, where Moses, sorry, led the people of God from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the Promised Land. And here we see this movement taking place, this new exodus where Jesus was leading the people of God through that wonderful dynamic, away from the power of sin uh, over our lives by defeating that power on the cross and bringing us into freedom, free to be the people that he created us to be his beloved children. Jesus is indeed a king. He's riding in humility. But the crowd that were once very quick to praise and throw their cloaks down before him were very quick to pick them up again. The crowd didn't want a humble messiah. The crowd wanted a military messiah. So Jesus didn't quite fit their image of what God should be. Does Jesus fit your image of what God should be? Jesus is humble. He will never force his way into your life. He comes as the Prince of Peace. Will you let him in to your heart? Will you throw down your cloaks? and worship Jesus? Or would you rather put him on a war horse, sending him on ahead of you, beating people into submission to make him their Lord? So the donkey says something about the character of God. 
God is humble. Secondly, we read that Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Jesus has compassion. As Jesus rode down the hill from Bethany, down the Mount of Olives, Jerusalem would have come into full view. The crowd with him fell into silence as they beheld the magnificence of the city. I had the opportunity a few years back to visit this church that is halfway down the Mount of Olives and it's called the Dominus Flevit Church. It's the church that is translated as the Lord wept and if you look very carefully you can see these vials uh, which are these little urns in a sense at the top uh, of the church. It was designed uh, to catch the tears that uh, people wept in these vials. Jesus walking down, riding down on a, on a donkey, down this, down this hill, this Mount of Olives, must have burst into tears for the lost. And this lament, Jesus speaks over the city, if only, if only you had known on this day what would bring you peace, but it is now hidden from your eyes. This weeping and this lament is echoed in Psalm 91, which is um, also uh, uh, echoed in Matthew verse, uh, chapter 23, verse 37. Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. At the same time of proclaiming judgment over Jerusalem, Jesus wept in love. Judgment and love meet in Jesus. God spoke to me recently and uh, I felt him say, What are you weeping over? I weep over the lost those who don't know Jesus, that they would come into the life he brings now in the present and eternity. Jesus weeps too. If only you knew who I am, he says. I weep over the brokenness of humanity, holding on to the hope that one day all things will be made new. I weep over both young and old who have a false picture of Jesus, not on a humble donkey, but on a frightening war horse, who see Jesus not as a friend and saviour, but as an enemy and a destroyer of fun. I weep over this nation and this world at the time of coronavirus, that the Lord would have mercy and restore and heal all that is broken. What are you weeping over? The Lord says. Could it be that the Lord Jesus is weeping over you? Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Humility. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Compassion. And finally, Jesus cleansed the temple, looking at purity and holiness. We read that Jesus entered the temple courts and he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. You see, after riding into Jerusalem as king, Jesus began pronouncing judgment on the old order of things. And he started at the temple. Jesus was shocked by the commercialization of God's temple. Priests had made it a lucrative business by exchanging money from Roman coinage into temple money to buy animals for Jewish temple sacrifice. Priests were making money by exploiting the poor and by missing the whole point of worship of God. Anger, a righteous anger, gripped Jesus. Anger over the manipulation and the pollution of worship. 
denying people true and authentic worship and making people jump through hoops and obeying rules mainly made by man and not God. You see, Jesus has a passion for purity and holiness. Just to go a little bit uh, deeper this Palm Sunday, I want to go to this wonderful book in the Apocrypha, the book of 2nd Maccabees. Maccabeus was a, a military leader and he led the Jewish people um, in, in a rebellion to, to rescue Jerusalem from Grecian pagan rule hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus. And there we read in verse 7 of chapter 10 of 2nd Maccabees, Therefore, bearing ivy wreathed wands and beautiful branches and also fronds of palm, they offered hymns and thanksgiving to him who had given success to the purifying of his own holy place. They decreed by public ordinance and vote that the whole nation of the Jews should observe these days every year. So this act of purifying Jerusalem by this judgment upon um, uh, this Grecian pagan rule and Maccabeus won and rescued the city. He purified the city and here we see Jesus doing the same. Jesus turned the tables of the money changers purifying the temple and pronouncing judgment of the old order of things. Jesus' response was a combination of two scriptures, Isaiah 56 verse 7 and Jeremiah 7 verse 11. My house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of robbers. You see, Jesus is passionate about worship. He's passionate about you and me. He's so passionate that it drove him to the cross on that Good Friday where that curtain of the temple was torn in two, removing that final barrier in the temple, that barrier between God and his people, being brought into the presence of God through Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, this Palm Sunday, let us be reminded of the character of God how he sees you and me. He is humble. He is compassionate. He seeks purity and holiness. And I'd also remember this Palm Sunday that Jesus is our King and he rules and reigns over every virus. And that our King will return. And when he returns, he's not going to be riding on a donkey. He's going to be riding in frightening majesty. Revelation 9 verses 11 to 12 paints this picture of our King returning. Verse 11, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. This is our King. He rules and he reigns over all of creation. Let us keep our eyes fixed on him at this time. Let us keep our eyes fixed on his holy word and let, our, let us keep our eyes fixed on his love for you and me. In this time of crisis let us place our hope in him. Jesus is King. May we pray. Lord Jesus, this Palm Sunday, we worship you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Help us with this raging storm of coronavirus going through this nation and this world. Help us to keep close to you, to fix our eyes on you, 
the author and the perfecter of our faith. And let us meditate on your holy word to find encouragement and peace in the midst of despair and worry. And draw close, we pray, by your holy presence to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen.